Now, Israel says talks with top U.S., Egyptian and Qatari officials in Paris on the Gaza war were constructive, but that there were still significant gaps that remained. Media reports have been reporting that the sides were working on an agreement in which Israel would agree to a ceasefire in return for the release of more than 100 hostages. Joining me now is Defence and Foreign Affairs Analyst Nawaf bin Mubarak Al Thani. He has served earlier as the Qatari Director of Defence Intelligence Operations and as the Defence Attaché to the US. He joins us now from Doha. Welcome to, to DW. We are hearing about a ceasefire deal in the making in Paris, as we just mentioned. Uh, do we know more about its terms? Well, actually, uh, Namisha, the, the way a lot of these uh, negotiations happen uh, in the past and the, the way the Qataris have been uh, dealing with this is through utmost secrecy, keeping it very close to their vest to ensure a successful outcome. And I don't believe that this will change in the process that is uh, reportedly happening now. Even so, we saw over 100 hostages released the last time around in November but can we expect all hostages to be released given that they are being held as a bargaining chip by Hamas? Well, that's the point of any negotiations, is to come to a conclusion of uh, a, you know, a positive result. In this case, the release of hostages and the cessation of violence through a ceasefire and hopefully a lasting peace to help the uh, people of Gaza who are suffering under a uh, very bad situation, as you've been reporting. So that is the expected end state. And again, the Qataris, as the lead uh, negotiators, have proven the effectiveness of this approach in the past, over 100 released. Unfortunately, the Israeli approach has been less successful through IDF operations that have failed and led to the death of, deaths of uh, hostages and obviously uh, thousands and tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians. You mentioned Qatari effectiveness, but we do know that there is a serious trust deficit between Israel and Qatar, and that is required if we are to reach that long-term ceasefire that you mentioned. Doesn't this limit what Doha's negotiators can even pull off? Well, again, that depends on, uh, you mentioned Israel, when in this case it depends on the Israelis. The Israelis have a proven track record of the Qataris' effectiveness in the past through requests from Israel and from our partners, the United States as well, and recently with the release of hostages. So the proof is in the pudding. They either see the proof and see, well, that's an effective thing, that it's not pie in the sky, it's not theoretical, it's achievable, or they can continue in this mass military operation that hasn't achieved even the IDF's own stated goals to this point. But I have to ask, Israel has reiterated again and again, you mentioned the idea of stated goals, that they will not stop until Hamas is eliminated. How then is a long-term ceasefire even possible? Because that has clearly not happened yet. Well, it is a standing understanding, standing, uh, you know, uh, 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 view in all policy and military operations that there is no military solution to a political question or a problem. There is only a political uh, solution to a political problem, and this is no different than any other. Uh, the region is not ready for another forever war. It's already spilling over to other regions. Just as we came on air, you saw the reports on the Jordanian border uh, of uh, Americans being attacked there. This is very worrying, and if it grows even further than this, then it will engulf not only the Middle East, but it will involve the Europeans and the Americans as well. Defense analyst Nawaf bin Mubarak Al Thani in Doha, thank you so much for your analysis.